Welcome to John Tiller Panzer Campaigns, Kharkov 43. Kharkov 43 was the final successful operation for the Axis forces in Russia. It marked the end of the Stalingrad tragedy and the prelude to Kursk. It was a sweeping campaign with large distances and low unit densities making it more akin to a desert campaign than the Eastern Front. The scenario played in this video is the death of Popov's mobile group February 20th to February 24th 1943. It was played between two players from the Wargaming Society. In the scenario I play as the Russian Defender. As mentioned in the briefing Popov had four cores. In the north of the map there was the 18th Tank Corps and the 3rd Tank Corps. Each corps was comprised of four brigades, three tank brigades and one motorised infantry brigade. The tank brigade usually comprised a headquarters unit, T-34 tank battalion, T-70 tank battalion, a motorised rifle battalion, a reconnaissance battalion with the BA-64 recon vehicle and the 37mm anti-aircraft battalion. Uh, because this operation was planned on the fly, uh, Popov's units were fatigued and under strength. The order of battle information can also be viewed via info strength. Now if we select the 18th tank call, you'll see that he has the 181st tank brigade as part of his call. So we go info strength. Now it is mobile group pop off. 18th tank core. And then we're looking for the 181st tank. So here he is here. So this is the 18th tank core. And he has the 110th tank brigade, the 170th, the 181st and the 32nd Motor Rifle Brigade. So that is a way for you to check your constituent units via the Info Strength dialog. The map is as at the end of Turn 1. You can see uh, the German units just approaching from the east. The yellow and purple brigades in the center are ski battalions. On the south of the map there are three key points Krasnormyskoy, Vodyaroy and Mayevka. Now Krasnormyskoy is uh, currently occupied by the 4th Guards Tank Corps but that will fall at some stage during the game, hopefully after day one from my perspective. Um, here is a view of the uh, entire map with the five key points there distributed along the western side of the battlefield. This is Krasno at the end of my second turn and as you can see the German player is trying to isolate the fourth guards in Krasno which is a sensible thing to do. Although minor moves in the scheme of things, I thought it was worth discussing some of my defensive thoughts at this stage. Um, you can see in the insert that was the end of turn one. Now note the uh, ski unit uh, in turn one and then I withdrew it so it was more than one hex away from the attacking units. Now the hope is at this stage is that means the Germans won't be able to assault that unit because it will cost them movement points to advance. The average German foot infantry has 26 movement points. Now if we select F4 we can see that movement cost foot is 7 movement points further down the chart is the 
movement modifier foot for snow conditions is 200%. So that means clear to clear hex costs 14. So to do an assault, it takes two thirds of your full movement points. So that would take them over. So that means that f uh, German uh, infantry unit could not advance towards that ski unit that I withdrew and conduct an assault. Sure, they could still have movement points left to do a, a normal combat, but they won't have the oomph to do an assault. So these are the sort of uh, things you need to understand about the game, when you, particularly when you're on defence. But F4 parameters, it's a feature well worth getting to know. In the same vein, I've moved the armoured unit in an attempt to slow down the isolation attempt. Uh, note there that I've moved it to the high ground. I have the contours on in this image, and so the German unit just to the north there is actually at a lower level. When attacking from lower level to higher, um, there's a penalty involved. Similarly, all the units in Krasno, I have them digging in uh, if they're not moving or doing something to obviously improve their possibility of their defensive positions. Uh, also, I've uh, any units sitting on a rail line, I've blown the rail line just to uh, cause inconvenience. Uh, probably in this scenario it won't matter, but in larger ones it certainly can. Uh, you can note the yellow triangle there, that means that part of the rail line's been uh, damaged and so they'll have to use engineers at some stage to repair it. That will take a turn, so if they really need the, the rail line, you know, it just delays that action. We'll now move on to the north of the map at the end of my third turn. Now at about this stage, I started getting a little bit uh, paranoid about my opponent. I thought he might try a swifty and come around the north side of the map or the perimeter and have a shot at my sources of supply which you can see there in the circles. So I sent my two ski brigades, the purple and yellow units, on a reconnaissance up these respective roads. Unfortunately the purple ski brigade bumped into some Germans here so they could be in big trouble there but at least the uh, yellow guys should get up there. When you're playing it's always a good idea to check the perimeters particularly when you're uh, playing a human opponent much more cunning uh, than the AI. Down south I was considering uh, what if my opponent was to do a similar thing and take a run up the uh, westerly side of the map so I was quickly sending a brigade across just to screen that side of the map. Meanwhile my second key point is coming under considerable pressure and I've already started evacuating uh, troops towards the defense of Mariyevka. Similar with these guys here, I'm pulling them back and I'm trying to keep the one hex away to force the German units to approach my units uh, rather than get caught in a assaults which uh, they're much more powerful. Overall I'm not attacking uh, the German units uh, because they're stronger and their defensive fires usually do more damage to me than the Soviet fires on them in the first instance. So by firing on them you're just giving them another chance to cause you more damage than you're causing them and they have the numbers in this instance which is a rare occasion for the Soviet player normally they have the numbers on their side but in this scenario uh, the germs are about one and a half to one I think. Uh, we move on now to the end of my fourth turn and it was had some interest in it uh, particularly down the southeast corner of the northern section of the map or the lower right. You might notice there's a line of villages which I thought initially would be a good defensive position and in fact on this map as far as defensive uh, combat modifiers really you only have village hexes and elevation. 
Now the rest of the hexes are clear and all the um, rivers or streams on the map are actually all streams so in these conditions uh, there's no defensive benefit at all so as the defender you're generally looking for villagers to hold your line or have a anchor for your line so initially I thought that line of villagers would be um, a good uh, defensive position but I realized by this turn that they are in grave danger of getting their flank turned, the northern flank turned. So I stripped off one brigade to go north, uh, one brigade to go back towards the west, and the brigade in contact with the Germans was to try and fight it out and see if they could withdraw if possible. You can see on the map there possible uh, lines of uh, defence that I'm setting up. The Yellow Ski Brigade are still uh, venturing north and we'll see what they can produce later on. Uh, the Purple Units unfortunately got in combat with the uh, Germans and I think they have a very short future. But we'll see what happens. In the south, uh, Kresno fights on and Vodoroy is under immense pressure uh, and I'm stripping off units from there and starting to form some sort of defense around Mariefka which I think will be a fairly critical key point in this battle. The end of turn 5 and I regret to inform Stavka that Vodoroy has fallen as you can see in the circle on the map there. So Mariefka is just there to the north and I'm forming something of an arc up there. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens. It's interesting with your psychology as the defender, uh, you can go from uh, organised retreat to rout very quickly. Meanwhile, down in Krasno, they continue to fight on. Uh, I think about two-thirds to three-quarters of the units there are broken or disrupted so it's only a matter of time but they're doing some pretty good work down there. To the east of uh, Mayevka Vodjeroy uh, you can see a solution to the retreating one hex at a time is to surround uh, a unit so that they cannot retreat the one hex. So there's a small example of that uh, technique there. In the north, the grey wave continues to push towards the west. Uh, not much more to say there than what I said previously. Uh, moving back from that village line to the next road line there and clump of villages and hoping to form some sort of defensive line against there, but it's going to be just a matter of trying to delay the inevitable, which is uh, the Soviet. Uh, strategy in this whole scenario. So we move now to the end of the last daylight turn. So the next turn will be dusk and then the two night turns after that. So this is obviously the south of the map. Uh, we continue to split away from Vodjeroy and try and form some sort of barrier there at Mayevka. Uh, down south Krasno is still holding on so hopefully they can hold on for the dust turn um, and we'll see what the opponent does uh, during the night turns where uh, fatigue and those types of things are, I think are doubled in the night turns so we're really set up for some interesting activity there to see what the respective sides do The uh, night factors there are on the screen. So at this stage, uh, due to the quality I'm recording at and YouTube limitations, I'll put this one in the can and publish it. And hopefully I'll get back to you in the next week or two. Uh, we'll discuss what happens during the night turns and day two. At this stage, I think my opponent's making acceptable ground, but we'll see what happens in the next video.